Welcome to the Fort Industrial Revolution. I'm Sebastian Alex, recording from a place that makes the very foundation of Indonesia's digital startup ecosystem. On the third industrial revolution, we observe the automation of machines. In this fourth industrial revolution, we see how these automated machines are interconnected through a cyber system, through the use of IoT, Internet of Things, or cloud technology. This revolution creates a larger online community where people are much more interconnected than before and fast information exchange can actually take place between various countries or even continents. This is what we call a disruption. Unlike innovation, that actually means doing the same thing, only much more efficient and better, disruption is all about transforming things, making the old way of doing things completely obsolete, changing the whole system. Well, take Google as an example. People used to get information through piles and piles of books and encyclopedias in the library. Now they're just one click away, to your phones, to your laptops, using Google Search, Google Books, or even Google Scholar, completely changing the way we do things. Well, according to David Eaves, a lecturer and also the chair of Digital Transformation in Government Program of Harvard Kennedy School, this disruption shifts citizen expectation. People expect governments to keep up with the speed and ease of the cyber system. Well, it's to better deliver and also cater to the society. According to the World Economic Forum's Digital Policy Playbook 2017, entitled Approaches to National Digital Governance, there are four main points in national digital governance, which are ensuring innovation in digital governance and access, ensuring growth in digital economy, digital democracy to develop a smart society and accessible public information and services, and well, lastly, regulations to protect this digital infrastructure, business, and rights. To create such a system is not easy. One has to think about its sustainability. This is not just riding on a global trend or tide. This process might take a while and a lot of work. It took Silicon Valley almost 60 years to be where they are right now. Silicon Valley itself has eight main pillars to ensure the ecosystem from going. First, supporting government and also corporations towards innovators, investors or venture capitalists, universities and research centers, of course, incubators for innovation, and supportive legal team for the intellectual property to be registered. And of course, lastly, the innovators themselves. The government should also plan this thoroughly through a three-tier playbook. First is strategy, know the objective and the risk, and of course, the existing regulation towards it, and then create a policy that can support this strategy from happening. And lastly, create a standard for the execution of the strategy and policy. Well, we're back here with my questions for this topic. Can the Indonesian government actually build such a melting pot of innovation here in Indonesia? Is the digital climate in Indonesia supportive enough for this? What are the strategies that the government made towards this digital age? Well, in Google, we use the term OKR, or Objective and Key Results. That's what are the OKRs, or the key deliverable for this strategy. And lastly, how do we maintain the standard? Well, what is the standard that the government used? This is where Ari Swang's paper um, mapping the digital governance ecosystem in Indonesia could be an interesting read. But well, I guess that's all from me today. Please do comment some mind-boggling questions or thoughts down below. Thank you very much for watching.